Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. Today we are going to do a really fun webinar. Um, we are going to do a very in-depth demonstration of the Panoply Data Warehouse, and we're super excited to get started. We thank you for joining live, or also if you're watching this, uh, the recorded version, we also thank you for watching. Um, we hope that today's uh, session answers any questions you have about uh, Panoply and uh, what a data warehouse is and what it's capable of. So let's go ahead and get started with just a housekeeping item. Uh, next slide, please, Skyler. So uh, I guess there's only one housekeeping item. Today, you can ask questions at any point in time. Um, on GoToWebinar, there is a questions facility in the window. Go ahead and ask your question at any point. I will ask your question to our expert panel um, at the end. So we have a dedicated question and answer period at the end. So we're going to let um, both of the gentlemen speak that are on the on the panel, and then we will do our questions and answer afterwards. Next slide, please. And to introduce our speakers, uh, hello, my name is Jason. I'm Panoply's evangelist, and we also have Mackenzie Wyatt, who is a solution specialist, will be joining us to walk us through uh, Panoply. And then Skylar Shasky is one of our data architects, and he will give us an in-depth uh, demo and talk about the common questions that customers have um, with uh, their Panoply data warehouse. So with that, I'm going to kick it over to Mac, who is going to speak to us for the next few slides. Go ahead, Mac. Cool. Thanks, Jason. And um, let me let me just begin by introducing myself. My name is Mac Wyatt. I work as a solution specialist at Panoply. What my role entails is working with um, new users to the platform, whether it's a demo request or start uh, taking out a free trial of, of Panoply. So, with that being said, I would love to give a quick high-level overview of about um, Panoply, who we are, what we do, and then from there I can hand it over to Skylar for a little bit of a UI demo. So. With that all being said, uh, to give an introduction to Panoply, we were founded four years ago, initially out of Tel Aviv, Israel. And since then, we've relocated our headquarters to San Francisco, so right in the heart of Silicon Valley. Still have about half of the company in uh, Tel Aviv, mostly R&D, and in SF, we have most of our sales and marketing teams. And as you can see on this slide here, we're backed by some of the top VCs in the Valley. And to really give you a, an idea of, of Panoply's growth of the past few years, We've been growing very quickly, especially in the past year and a half. We have over 200 customers today. And as you can see, G2 Crowd has listed us as a, a high performer and ranked us for uh, as the number one ease of use, of ease of uh, implementation, and the number one overall uh, company for small businesses today. So with all that being said, um, what Panoply's on-one data platform is, is we allow our customers to leverage their data in a way that has not been uh, able to, that, in a way that they have not been able to do so before. And we combine that with a data ingestion engine, as well as an automated data warehouse, and lastly, a query optimization engine. So we'll discuss the three main components of our platform soon, but let's focus on what left looks like for many org uh, organizations today that do not use Panoply. So, Skylar, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So some of you here may be more familiar with the pain of managing a data stack than others. So. Nonetheless, the amount of time and effort spent managing your own data journey from data source to BI can be very complicated. So looking at the screen here, you see on the far left side, you have your data sources. There's a lot of different steps. And just in order to get to the end goal of business intelligence or visualization, organizations hire teams of data engineers, DBAs, and DevOps, just in order to extract, load, transform data from their main sources into a data warehouse. And then once the data has been brought to a data warehouse, then there's the need to scale, to optimize, to model schema, uh, and clean their data stacks. And all this is on top of their other daily responsibilities, meaning that managing data can be very complicated. Skylar, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. However, uh, Panoply customers know that with our all-in-one data platform, this is much easier and provides true automation. And don't just take their word for it. You can see many syndicated sources are also noticing how easy data management is with Panoply. Um, so let's take a look at how and why we are ranked as the easiest data management platform on the market today. And Skylar, you can go to the next slide. Thank you. So looking at this slide, you can see the three main components of the all-in-one data platform. Again, the data ingestion engine, the automated or smart data warehouse, and then lastly, the query optimization engine. So I'll go into depth into each of these pieces. So to begin, let's talk a little bit about the data ingestion engine. This includes over 100 native data integrations. So Let's take a step back. Without Panoply, again, you would need to either leverage a separate ETL tool and pay for that cost, or uh, create these data sources, this data pipeline yourself, set the schema, 
the formatting, the compression, et cetera. And then on top of that, you would need to ensure that the data pipelines from your data sources to the data warehouse are reliable. And so that requires a lot of manual monitoring all throughout the day. But with Panoply, no matter the service or the structure or the schema, you can ingest your data into our platform with a few clicks and not have to worry about any sort of coding or development work. Um, and so with Panoply, you simply plug in the data sources, no coding required all throughout our UI, and we'll get to that here in a second. And we do all the transformations automatically for you post load by using natural language processing. And this allows the platform to recognize and structure the data according to the underlying schema. And with that, some of our customers have seen upward of 80 to 90% less management needed, which is terrific. And on top of that, the data ingestion engine has a scheduling feature, which allows our customers to schedule jobs as often as every single hour, every single day, making this a, a set and forget it tool. So Skylar, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. And these are just a, a slew of the integrations that we provide today. So analytics, social media, sales and marketing integrations, as well as databases, SQL and NoSQL, and file systems like S3 or Google Drive. So with Panoply, you're able to save the time of your existing data engineering team by using our 100 uh, native data sources without, again, any sort of coding or development work required, allowing them to focus on their primary tasks. And, and, and about 25% of the integrations that we provide today were initially customer requests too. So our customers give us input on which new data sources to add to this list, and so it's constantly growing. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, if we talk a little bit next about the, the second step of the all-in-one data platform, which is the automated data warehouse. So once the data has been brought into the data warehouse through our native ETL tool, Panoply will handle all the technical decision-making for you. Um, everything from creating and maintaining the data warehouse, and this is going to mean that you don't have to worry about this. This is going to, a few examples include elasticity and compute and storage, table optimization, and automated backups. So with Panoply, things like scaling and schema modeling, compression, data hygiene, and indexing remain the responsibilities of, of the data teams. Um, that's going to be, um, that's exactly what Panoply is going to alleviate for you. So without Panoply, this is going to be your responsibility, but within our platform, we will handle all of this work for you. So ultimately, we manage the ETL and the data warehousing components for you on the back end, and you can simply plug in your BI tool and get to work discovering insights out of your data very, very quickly. Next slide, please. Thank you. And again, we connect with any BI tool out there, any tool that connects via JDBC or ODBC, um, you can plug into Panoply and have this central source of truth. But not just that, we also offer query performance optimization. Um, the first thing that I'll address is AQM, or automated query materialization. What this leverages is the special sauce machine learning algorithms that we have within our platform. This monitors the query patterns and identifies the most important queries for our customers, and then from there, they will become um, materialized automatically. So our customers have been able to see results of up to a thousand X faster queries than before. An example could be queries that used to take minutes are now taking seconds, and second and queries that used to take seconds are now taking milliseconds. And on top of that, Panoply never stops optimizing and gets faster and faster over time. And another great feature that we provide in Streamline is view materialization. So End users of the platform have the ability to select certain queries to be materialized that are vital to a certain dashboard or a port, for example. And again, this gives our users additional control and empowers them to be more data-driven without any sort of technical um, decision-making required. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so before we discussed how data management can be complicated, but with Panoply's all-in-one data platform, anyone can access data analytics at the click of a few buttons and no coding required. Business users, data scientists, data analysts, data engineers can all benefit from Panoply. We, we probably have about 50% of our customer base are non-technical users. So you, if you are working in, in marketing or business and you don't want to or you cannot rely on an, an internal IT team, Panoply gives you the, the ease of use and simplicity required. However, if you are in the IT or engineering organization, um, you have the ability to have much of your workload reduced, and this is going to make things much easier for you on a day-to-day -day basis using our all-in-one data platform. Next slide, please. Let's talk a little bit about a few of our customers, um, ranging from retail to healthcare. Uh, we have great case studies for all of these customers on our website, so I'd encourage everyone to take a look after the webinar, but here you see 
um, the, the, the words that people have um, used to describe Panoply. If, if you take a quick second to look at these, you'll see a lot of phrases talking about the ease of use, the ability for them to focus on their data instead of the technical aspect of data management. And um, enterprise organizations like Kimberly Clark and GoDaddy are using this, as well as up and coming brands and organizations like HoneyBook and, and Well. Again, please take a look at our uh, case study website online for, for any further detail on that. Next slide. Oh, thank you. So why Panoply? Um, if I were to summarize the immediate time to value, thanks to the ease of use and the simple UI that you're about to see, is one simple reason why Panoply is an excellent choice. Next, it's an all-in-one solution that unifies the ETL and the data warehouse, um, coupled with query optimization for existing BI tools. Um, on the market, there is no other solution that provides these two unified. You would need to piecemeal an ETL provider with a data warehouse. However, with Panoply, it's an all-in-one. And then lastly, why Panoply is we, we give our customers the ability to scale data initiatives today, not next week, not next month, not next quarter, without hiring new engineers or absorbing the time of your existing data teams, thereby impacting your bottom line. Next slide. Thank you. Um, one thing I will note is the 24-7 uh, expert customer support that we have. We take a lot of pride in our support at Panoply, and, and we have 24-7 coverage thanks to the teams that we have in the US, Israel, and the Philippines. So please do support, uh, subscribe to our blog and community forum as well as per reason or documentation and content library for more in-depth insights. And you can always reach out to us um, on our chat on our website as well for any sort of customer support or questions. I will probably uh, conclude here with the next slide or two, Skylar, um, talking a little bit about what I would recommend as a next step for everyone on the call today, which is taking out a free three-week trial of Panoply. Uh, we make it very simple to sign up. There's no credit card information required, and you can begin by ingesting your data sources in minutes. Um, you'll work side by side with the data architect and someone like myself to scope out your personal use case and begin to see immediate insights. And we offer the full capabilities of the platform. So you can bring in as many data sources and as much storage as you like. And at the end of the free three week trial, you have the ability to easily transfer that into a live deployment. One more slide here is the data architect support. So what our DAs do, and Skylar's gonna give a, a great uh, presentation on this uh, here in a few moments is, we, 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 with the dedicated data architect support, we offer configura uh, configuration, support and tips and troubleshooting throughout the trial period and then afterwards for all of our customers. And we can even assist with helping writing SQL queries for more of our non-technical non users. So working with SQL syntax and helping them to identify the, the proper views to materialize, et cetera. It's all part of the, uh, the Panoply package that we provide. And I think with that being said, we can, uh, to go to the next slide and I'll, I'll stop sharing myself and you know, hand the ball over to Skylar and he can give you a quick walkthrough of the UI here. Great, thank you, Mac. Let me uh, get out of the presentation here and go over to the website. Perfect, yeah, so, so thank you very much, Mac. Um, I'll introduce myself as well just briefly here. My name is Skylar Shasky. Uh, I am a data architect here at Panoply. Mac just talked a little bit about my role, um, but yeah, in, in general, um, you know, me and my team, we offer technical support to our users, advice on best practices about how to get the most out of Panoply, um, and really we serve as our customers' advocates within the technical team here at Panoply as we continue to uh, build out and improve the platform. Um, so what I'm going to do is just give you a, a quick walkthrough of the Panoply interface itself how to use it um, and walk through uh, just a, a quick use case of ingesting some data into Panoply and then connecting a, a BI tool, in this case, Chartio to Panoply and creating a, a visualization. So I'll walk through step-by-step step to show you how to do everything. Um, so let me start by going ahead and logging into the platform. Uh, so Panoply platform is at panoply.io. Put in my credentials. And now we have landed in my personal Panoply account. So the first page I'd like to show you all is the data sources screen here. Um, so obviously Mac talked about how Panoply is an all-in-one solution. We offer a combination of ELT as well as a fully managed data warehouse environment. Um, I would definitely say that the data sources, ingesting data into Panoply is generally gonna be your first step, right? 
So the data sources screen is where you're able to set up new data sources as well as configure your existing data sources to ingest data into Panoply through our systems. Um, so I'll show you what it looks like to add a new data source. I'm gonna click this add data source button and I will see a menu populate that has some data sources on the right hand side and categories on the left hand side. So we can search by data source um, but I'll focus in on three main categories just to give you an overview of um, the types of use cases that can be really good for pa with Panoply. Uh, so first I'll start, or I'll start with files and services, excuse me. Um, files and services is a little bit of a catch-all bucket for us. Within it, you can do things such as directly upload files. Um, those could be CSVs or JSON or Excel files, for example. Um, we also offer various cloud storage options. So things like Amazon S3 or Google Cloud Storage or even HDFS, which is the underpinnings of Azure Blob. Um, if you just had files sitting in those environments, you could absolutely ingest them into Panoply. Uh, and we do set up some um, scenarios with our clients where they will have, uh, you know, a, process on their source side where they push files to a, a cloud storage vehicle on a regular basis and Panoply can schedule jobs to ingest data from those sources. So, um, you know, I think a theme with Panoply is it's easy to use and it's also highly customizable to your needs, which is really cool. Um, we also offer this uh, Panoply SDK, the software development kit. It's available in Python, Ruby, and Node.js. Uh, we do have a great menu of ETL options, but of course there may be an application that's unique to your industry or um, just something that we don't natively support yet. So if you do have internal uh, developer talent and desire to custom code a connection, that SDK is absolutely available for you to utilize. Um, and feel free to click on that. If you're ever on a trial, we offer some documentation about the SDK within the connector itself. Um, so moving on to the next category, I'll click on databases. So uh, databases, you know, fairly uh, straightforward here. It's going to be SQL and NoSQL databases. Um, you're able to set up connectors to any of these and ingest data kind of as it exists on the source side. Um, if you did have multiple um, SQL servers, for example, multiple databases stood up and you wanted to ingest data from each one of them individually, you can set up multiple connectors within Panoply to the same type of data source very easily. Um, that concept of setting up multiple data sources of the same type uh, can also be important if you have different configurations within uh, the tables in the same database. So I'll, I'll probably show a little bit more about that when I uh, connect to a specific um, source here in a moment, but just keep in mind you can set up multiple connections to the same source if necessary. And then moving on to the last category, I'll, I'll focus in on the API connectors. So this is definitely a, a sweet spot for us and this menu is pretty thorough and continuing to be built out, which is exciting where, as Mac was alluding to, we always add uh, new connectors based on client feedback. Um, but what you'll see here is a really good variety of social media, um, marketing, sales, inventory management, finance types of applications. Uh, and I'd say that variety of applications really um, tells a story about the use cases we support, right? So we do work with clients in uh, many different verticals across many different functions related to, uh, again, sales, marketing, um, I guess, customer analytics, finance, uh, inventory, I'd say all of those things can be managed uh, and, and uh, leveraged effectively within the Panoply uh, system that we offer here. Uh, again, that flexibility, which is, is really nice. Um, I'll click into a specific connector. So Google Analytics tends to be a, a good example many people are familiar with. Um, so when I click Google Analytics here, I see that it's asking me to log in. So I go ahead and click that button. It's taking me to the Google side of things to authenticate. So I quickly um, authenticate with my email address, allow Panoply to access my data. Now you'll see my Google login uh, is present there. I've authenticated. I'm able to select a view within that API. 
And then once I do that, this menu populates, which has all of the metrics and dimensions uh, of the Google Analytics API in a checkbox menu. Um, so that's just the terminology that Google uses, right? Metrics and dimensions. Essentially, these are individual data objects. Um, so things such as users, sessions, searches um, on the metric side, and you know, obviously within the uh, or within the metrics, right? And, and then the dimensions can be things like the source um, of these metrics, the browser that they came from, the device category, etc. In general, the connectors are gonna look similar to this, right? They're gonna have a, a checkbox type menu where you're selecting your data and then you're able to adjust it from there. Um, I will say, you know, a different type of connector may look slightly different. So for example, um, if I were pulling from Salesforce, it's not gonna say metrics and dimensions. It's gonna say, I believe the terminology is resources and it'll have things like uh, accounts and um, leads, right? So always going to be similar and it'll be pretty straightforward if you if you're familiar with the application in question um, but you're going to see this this checkbox type menu that's going to make it really easy to select your data without any coding um, if i scroll down within the connector itself let's say i've selected all of the metrics and dimensions i want i see that there's some additional uh, configurability here that i can set up so i can do things such as select a uh, time range for, from which i want to ingest data um, the Google Analytics connector has the dropdown. In other um, in other data sources, we may offer an incremental key, which would be just a field that you would define uh, that we would govern um, ingestion on to make sure we're only ingesting recently updated data. Uh, we also offer the ability to name a destination table or even a dynamic prefix if multiple tables are being created by the same source. Uh, you can define primary keys to enforce deduplication. Um, you can exclude certain fields if they're sensitive or irrelevant. Uh, if you have JSON text within your um, data, you can parse that out. Um, and then you can also truncate your data and essentially collect it fresh every time. Um, so definitely some, some options there to keep in mind as you're ingesting your data. And uh, the other thing to point out here is that you can schedule your data sources. So you can schedule them to run on any day of the week or every day up to as frequently as every hour. And then also, of course, you can name your data sources. So if you have multiple Google Analytics data sources, you can name it whatever you want to help you keep track of things. Um, so for the purpose of the demonstration today, I actually found a data set via Kaggle. Um, well, I should say one of my colleagues found the data set, uh, shout out to Paul, but um, we found this data set and I was able to ingest it into Panoply. I leveraged our S3 connector to do so. So this is the actual, the actual data source that I used to ingest the data for the presentation today. Um, pretty simple, you know, really all I ha had to do was set up the S3 bucket, um, place the file within it, put in my credentials, um, my AWS credentials to connect to that bucket. And then the only file I put in there was this Yelp academic data set business file. And I selected, uh, I, well, I customized the destination as Yelp underscore biz. And I selected the file and then I clicked collect and you know the data is uh, sitting in my account ready to go. And, and I'll show you a little bit more about what that looks like here in a moment. Um, but I think this is a good demonstration too of um, how our connectors are, are similar, but perhaps slightly different, right? They use slightly different authentication methods that are unique to each um, type of connector. And in this case, instead of selecting individual data objects, I was selecting a file. Um, but I, I think a take home point there is you as a user of Panoply don't have to worry about the differences between all of these types of sources or write any code to handle any of that. Um, that's a beautiful thing, right? We've taken care of that for you. Uh, you just have to select your data and, and run um, with your analysis. So let's say I have kicked off a collection job with my Yelp data source here, um, and I want to see what's occurring you know, currently within my uh, data warehouse as far as my running, pending, uh, and completed uh, collection jobs and, and other types of jobs. So this job screen that I clicked on is a, a really good window into um, just what's happening within your account. 
So this is going to show a history of all the jobs that have run on your behalf, and it will also show any currently running uh, jobs as well. So it'll show pending and running jobs, uh, also a summary of the successful and failed jobs within the past 24 hours, and then you can filter this screen by the um, time, so the time that a job was created or completed, and we give you these options, and then the type of job, so was it a manual collection, was it a regular, regularly scheduled collection, was it a, a materialization of a view, for example, and then the status of the job. So uh, did the job succeed, is it currently running, is it pending? Um, you're able to select the options that you want and filter down this menu to make things a little bit easier for you to see. And then you can also click into any individual job and see a drop down menu of just some details about uh, you know, the description of it, um, when it was created, when it completed, kind of what happened within the job. Um, so definitely some, some good information there. And then once your data has been ingested into Panoply, you'll be able to see a summary of everything within the table screen, right? So for my Yelp data, which I've ingested, I see that uh, here's my Yelp underscore biz table that I defined within the data source we went over just a moment ago. And oh, hey, by the way, Panoply also automatically parsed out <clears throat> a couple of nested um, fields here into additional tables. So this one gives um, the uh, opening and closing hours for the various businesses within that Yelp data source. And this one gives some additional um, metadata attributes about all of the businesses. Um, but as you see within this screen, I have a summary of all of my tables. I see the schema that they're in. I see the number of rows and the size of the data, as well as a couple of views down here too. So um, all of these uh, rows with the document icon, these are tables. Down here with the magnifying glass icon, these are views. And views are definitely an important part of Panoply. So keep that in mind. You can see them from the table screen and I'll talk a little bit more about them in a moment here. Um, so let's click into the Yelp data and see what we're working with, right? So here's the Yelp underscore biz table. This is my main table. I see a Panoply provides a preview of the data itself. So I'm able to see things like the name of all these various businesses. I see the address, which is also parsed out to the city and the state. Um, I see the actual location by latitude and longitude, which is pretty cool. Then I see the average review that they've received uh, in stars, the number of um, the count of the number of reviews of the business, and category of the business as well, and some uh, additional metadata that Panoply automatically appends to the table to help uh, efficiently ingest the data. So nice to see the preview, definitely. Um, so with this within table screen offers that view, and it also if you scroll down, uh, we'll show uh, explicitly all the metadata within the table in this menu. So I'm able to see, again, all of those field names. I can click into any individual field and see, for example, the type. I can also change the name of it. I can add a description if I want. I can um, do things such as adjust the, the nesting, the way that the data, if it is nested, the way we handle that nesting. Um, you know, I can alter the data type. I may have already mentioned that. So definitely, uh, you know, even within the table, within a field, there is some configurability here. So keep that in mind. Um, and then uh, last thing to point out on this page is going to be these connection details. Uh, so these connection details are really important because Panoply offers a, a package solution that has ETL and a, a fully managed data warehouse environment, right? We, we've talked about that on this webinar already. That's great. However, you likely will want to, um, once your data lands in Panoply, do some really cool things with it, such as visualizing, uh, creating dashboards, perhaps running machine learning applications to better understand your data and do predictive analytics. Um, all of those things are, are total, totally viable use cases with Panoply and with the data that's housed in Panoply. And the way that you're gonna do that is by leveraging these connection details. Um, they're purposefully very flexible. So you can connect to just about any BI tool out there on the market. Uh, we have a lot of clients that use Chartio and you know, internally here at Panoply, we use Chartio. So um, that's been a great partner of ours. 
You can also connect to SQL workbenches. Uh, so if you want to do um, you know, heavy query operations upon your data that's housed in Panoply, you can connect to your favorite workbench, be it SQL Workbench J or DataGrip or DBeaver, uh, kind of any of the above. And then you can also connect um, just via any, any code you're writing. So there are um, integrators within Python and R <clears throat> that allow you to connect to uh, your Panoply data either via a Redshift or Postgres driver. Um, for example, on Python, I believe there's a, a library called PsychoPG2, I think it's called, um, and you're able to pretty quickly connect uh, you know, a, a Python script that you're running to Panoply to ingest that data in there, and then you can use your favorite um, Python libraries, be it pandas or numpy, to analyze your data. <clears throat> and just quick thing to point out, uh, FYI, the connect details, uh, they are within a table, but you can also access them via our left-hand menu with this connect link right here. So that's a, a good summary of the data and, and what you need to know about um, everything within a table. Um, so if I click analyze or query as a next step, it's going to take me to the same page, which is just a lightweight SQL workbench that we have built into the platform here. So within this, I can do simple queries. So this is a select star query. I can do, you know, select, select count star if I just want to know how many records are in that table, for example. And I can run that within this environment. Um, I will note that we explicitly enforce a limit of 100 on the result set of any query ran in this environment. So again, if you want to do, uh, you know, heavier, more thorough type of querying, I would definitely recommend attaching a workbench, um, as I was alluding to a moment ago. Uh, I see in this case, you know, I, I ran my count query. Okay, I have 192,000 or so records within my data. Good to know. So let's look at the Yelp data again here. Um, so I see the preview of my data. We were kind of looking at that a second ago within the table screen. Um, we understand that I can query this in this environment, but I do want to point out um, the functionality of saving queries as views. So saving queries as views is available from this analyze screen. So imagine you're ingesting data from multiple different data sources that have information about your um, marketing efforts. For example, let's say you're ingesting Google Analytics data and Facebook ads data. Um, and many different uh, online ad platforms, and you want to join that all together based on some sort of identifier that the data has in common, the way to do that would be to write a SQL query that joins the data based on your business logic um, and save that query as a view. And then when you're trying to, you know, perhaps create a dashboard that visualizes some KPIs or show a visual visualization uh, of another sort or, again, run machine learning, all the above, you can point um, those external tools directly at the view. So in a sense, you're staging your data in the format that you want it uh, to be ingested and um, analyzed in the easiest way. Uh, so for the purposes of the demo today, I actually already created a view. Um, so I'll go ahead and open that really quickly here. It's called Yelp Biz Joined Alt, it's the name of my view. And let me expand this menu here and I'll see. So basically what I did here was I selected most of the attributes from the main table, which is that Yelp biz table I was showing you. But then I also pulled in some additional information. I pulled in uh, some of the attributes from that attributes table. So uh, dogs allowed was an attribute, uh, BYOB, uh, yes or no is an attribute, and then has TV, yes or no is also an attribute. And then I also pulled in the hours. Um, from the hours table. So the, the, the hours per day for each one of these businesses. And you can see a little bit more about the syntax, the way I did that, essentially just joining um, my tables together. And I'll note that in this case, Panoply made it really easy because for example, in um, the attributes table, we include a field uh, called, um, Yelp biz ID, which is essentially a foreign key to connect back to that initial uh, table that we were we were talking about, the Yelp biz table. So made it pretty easy to join it all together. 
and um, create a unified view of all of this Yelp data about businesses across um, the world. So what I'm going to do next is connect an external tool to Panoply and actually create a visualization slash dashboard like we've been discussing. So to do that, I am going to pop over to Chartio here and I'm gonna to go to the data sources screen and create a new data source, right? So I'm in Chartio now, I'm able to add a new data source with that add data source button. And I will see that Panoply shows up within the menu and I'm able to select Panoply. And then um, within this screen, it may look a little bit familiar to you. Essentially, it's asking for this information. So all I need to do is you know, put in the host name, the database, the port, and my username and password within this Panoply um, connector, and I'm off to the races. So my username is Skylar at Panoply.io. I'm going to type in my password and very carefully not tell you what it is. And then I'm going to put in my database name as well. Uh, and for the alias, let's just call this the webinar data source. Great, so let me go ahead and connect. Chartio is doing its magic, analyzing the schema of my data warehouse. Awesome, and notice the public schema. It found my two views down here, the Yelp is joined and the Yelp is joined alt. And then it found um, all my other tables. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And now my data has been created, which is great. So go to a dashboard, go to my personal sandbox where I do not have a dashboard right now. So let's create a new dashboard. Um, let's call this the webinar dash. Create it. Great. So what I've done so far is connect Chartio to Panoply. I've created a new dashboard. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and add a chart and connect it to my data source that I created. So when I click that, that add chart button, I'm able to come over here in this menu and point out, point at my new webinar data source. And we will see all of my tables here. So I see all these various Yelp. Um, so these three are tables, these two are views that I've created. Um, by the way, I created two views that essentially have the same definition. And I, I think I may have neglected to mention a, a concept around views that's really important when it comes to performance. So allow me to uh, divert myself for a minute to talk about that. Um, so obviously a, a view is essentially a saved SQL query, right? It's gonna transform your data in a way that makes sense for your business and, and stages your data really well for whatever tool is gonna be the um, final tool to use it. Obviously, when you're running a query, particularly if it's a complex query that's joining multiple tables together, that can take time. Um, and what we've found is that if there's a certain view or query that you want to run on a regular enough basis, it can be very valuable to materialize it. And essentially what materialization means in this context is saving the result set of a query to disk as a table. Um, so that anytime you're querying that view, you're querying a, a saved result set as opposed to having to generate the result set and then query that. Essentially taking a step out of the equation and making things significantly faster. Um, another note there is that Panoply will automatically refresh um, any of your materialized views anytime any of the underlying tables that are a part of the view definition are updated. So it's a nice automation built into our platform that takes a lot of headaches you know, off of your plate there. And I'll just show you quickly if I head back to Panoply. Um, so I'll go into my tables and I see, okay, so this is my materialized view up here. But if I look at this Yelp biz joined alt, if I click on the three dot menu, I see this materialize option. So I am able to materialize the view via this menu. If I have that feature turned on for my account, and that's going to make um, my performance really great against that view, which is cool. So um, in this case, you know, I'm going to pull data in from that Yelp biz joined um, view, which is the materialized view. And in this case, 
it is Yelp data. It has to do with uh, the business and it has some information about their stars and reviews. So I've had a fun idea to take a look at, um, so let's go by state. Naturally, when I saw that there was a dogs allowed field, I was super curious about that. So I wanted to do some analysis on how businesses that do allow dogs fare within <laughs> within the Yelp environment. And uh, I'll, yeah, so I'll take their stars to um, represent the reviews that they're getting as well. So um, I'm gonna do the average of their stars. Um, the, my dimensions are state and dogs allowed. I am gonna filter on um, dogs allowed here because there are some, uh, when I was taking a look at this data earlier, there are some records that do not have a true or false value, they have a blank value, and I'd rather just look at the, the trues or falses. Well, there's actually something entered in there. So I'm gonna filter for one of true or false. And then let's see what happens when I run this query. Cool, so I see by state, by dogs allowed, true or false, what the average rating of each business was, right? So pretty interesting. I want to look at it in a more visual way though. So what I'm gonna do is add a transformation. I'm gonna pivot my data. So I go ahead and click pivot. Um, average of stars is going to be an average. You can sort ascending, that's fine. I'm going to apply it and close it. And I'm going to run this query. And then I'm gonna click the bars here. And I see that it by default stacked these bars. So I'd prefer to see it side by side. So I'm gonna click into the settings and unclick this stacked option and click done. So now I um, have a chart here that's showing me by state what the average stars were for um, businesses that either do not allow dogs, false or true do allow dogs. So let me say, let me call this dog friendly, for example. I'm gonna go ahead and save this chart. It's not in my dashboard. I can place this chart within my environment and I see a very scientific analysis that shows me that clearly the trues win the day. So in general, my conclusion from this is if you're running a business, you should definitely consider making it dog friendly because of course we all love dogs. Um, so obviously, you know, kind of a, a funny use case there, but um, in reality, hopefully you saw how quick and easy it was to, you know, connect to a Panoply data source and create a visualization in just a, a minute or two, literally. Um, and I think, the beautiful thing about Panoply is once you've got it set up, it's just going to be that automated environment for you where any use case that you can think of on the BI side or visualization that you can think of, be it silly like my dog friendly visual, those visualization here or something that's obviously more tangible for your business and um, you know analyzing KPIs and going to lead to bottom line dollars and cents for your business. Um, all that experimentation and playing around can be done within your BI environment, within uh, the SQL Workbench, and Panoply is going to be uh, kind of living and breathing on its own with um, people such as myself monitoring your performance, as well as just the, the automated system that we've built managing your ETL and the data warehouse environment itself. So I think that's a solid walkthrough of a, um, what Panoply can look and feel like you know, from beginning to end. So I think I will pause my presentation there and uh, maybe we can jump into a Q&A session. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Skylar, for the walkthrough. And as a owner of a golden retriever, I can totally vouch that I would prefer to go to places that are dog friendly. Um, so in terms of questions and answers, I'm gonna look in the live view. We don't have any questions that have come through just yet. So let me go ahead and invite you to, if you're a live viewer and you wanna ask a question to either Skylar, myself, or Mac, feel free. Um, but we do have some questions that we have prepared. So 
Question for, um, for Mac. How is Panoply different from other data management and data warehouse solutions? Thanks, Jason. Yeah, great question. Uh, and I hear this a lot. And my answer to this is, is always pretty much a, a simple answer in the fact that Panoply is different than any sort of data warehouse solution, A, because we offer the automation with the machine learning algorithms like we've spoken about here today that handle the, the technical decision making like scaling, partitioning, indexing, etc. We allow you to scale as an organization without needing to hire additional engineers or DPAs. And if you're a non-technical business user, there's no need um, for you to rely on IT at all. Couple that with um, the second the second part of my uh, answer is the fact that we combine the data warehouse, the storage component with a native ETL um, ingestion engine. This is huge because you're able to bring in the data from your existing siloed systems without any sort of coding or development work. So within the same platform, you can bring the data from your external data sources into Panoply. And once the data has been brought into Panoply, it is a set it and forget it system that will handle all of the work for you at the end of the day. You're able to focus on analytics and not the data janitorial aspects of, of a data pipeline or a data stack. Another thing I'll add on to that, Mac, is um, so part of my job is I get to interview customers and tell and uh, build those case studies and hear about what they like and don't like about Panoply. And one thing that they love about us is our technical support. So we have, uh, we talked about the data architect team. We have data architects uh, all over the globe. So typically we would reply to questions within a matter of hours. And one thing that I've been told by numerous people across, across the US and EMEA is that not only do we answer the question thoroughly, we actually care about the question being asked and we try and our our DAs and support team try to really dig into the question to give an educated answer not just some you know copy and paste out of a out of a knowledge base kind of thing so Great. in addition to um, machine learning AI continual optimization is we actually have humans that care um, so if you are looking for that if you want support and then another thing that we do I think really well is we have we, we do a lot to educate our customers on what can be done with data um, we do that through our case studies, through talking about what other people, what other, what other um, analysts and business users are doing with data through our customer uh, program. So, you know, companies like Saucy and GoDaddy and Kimberly Clark, you know, going from startups all the way to enterprise. We try to tell you what you can do with data through the lens of other um, data practitioners. So, if you want to see what we have in that, you know, in you know, in terms of advice and and best best uh, best practices and learnings go to our blog and also go to our community so it's community.panoply.io you can see what other people are doing with data um question for skylar what if i have a data source that i'm trying to bring in panoply but we don't already have a connector for what so the question is what if i have or what if panoply doesn't have a data source i need yeah that's that's a really good question that actually does come up um you know, a decent amount with our customers because every business is unique and uh, may be using different applications and systems. And um, obviously we want a comprehensive view of our data to analyze. So when that question comes up, there's a, a few different paths that we can take. Um, the first one I would say is leveraging one of our partners. So we do work with a pure ETL provider partners such as Stitch and Fivetran, which may offer um, data source connections that we don't offer natively in the platform at this time. And we can always set up an introduction to uh, one of those organizations to um, get you on board with them to essentially pipe data into a Panoply instance where you can use a handful of Panoply sources and augment it with a source that is only provided by one of those organizations. Um, Another option is going to be the uh, SDK, the software development kit that I alluded to briefly during the demo. So if you want to um, custom code a connection, you can leverage that SDK to essentially get a lot of the benefits of the Panoply ingestion optimization module, so to speak. Um, you'll just need to provide you know, a little bit of effort there to uh, code the actual data pool um, from the application that you had in mind. Um, another option here would be if 
you're able to export data from that application into some sort of flat file, perhaps a CSV, we can ingest CSVs very easily from multiple different locations, including um, file systems, cloud storage, just direct uploads, all of the above. Um, and if you have any ability to automate that process, we can automate the process of pushing files into those systems. We can automate the process of pulling data into Panoply from those locations. Um, and then I'll mention one other possibility. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so this one is, I would say, perhaps a little bit more rare. But of course, if you wanted to um, leverage some of our white glove service and perhaps pay a, a little bit extra, we could potentially um, custom code a connection for you and prioritize it within our roadmap. Um, we are always developing new sources, but if it's really important to your organization and you have a, a timeline on it, just talk to us, reach out to us and, and talk to us about it. And we, we may be able to work with you on that. Um, I, I think that's a pretty good comprehensive summary of the different options there. Perfect. Um, question for Mac. So put yourself in the shoes of someone who already has Tableau or Looker or another visualization tool. How easy is it to implement Panoply on top of what they already have? And what are the benefits uh, to that person? Let's, let's just take Tableau, for example. If I already have Tableau, what would be the, um, the benefit of me adding Panoply into that stack? Yeah, good question. So uh, a lot of people might go down the route of, of they currently have Tableau and they have, let's say, three data sources like Google Analytics, Salesforce, and HubSpot. And as of now, they are connecting to each source separately. Um, each, the data is not consolidated into one place, i.e. a data warehouse. Um, what we found, and, and Tableau actually ran a great case study on this, is they compared um, Panoply to not having a data warehouse in general. Um, and they found that our platform was, um, I believe last time that I, I saw, it was up to 200 to 300% faster query performance, all because having a central so, uh, source of truth for Tableau to query into is going to make a, a huge difference in the query and, and reporting and dashboard times for Tableau users in this example. Instead of having Tableau need to go to three different sources and then consolidate all that information within a BI tool, which is not the purpose of, of a BI tool, um, leveraging Panoply provides that um, one, one single source of truth again for Tableau to go to directly. And from there, the the performance and, and uh, boost that we see is uh, pretty pretty outstanding. And a lot of our customers have found um, immediate ROI and immediate time to value from leveraging that, that middle component between Tableau and their data. Awesome. And then can you tell us about Panoply's pricing? How does it work? Yep. So pricing is predicated upon the amount of storage that you bring into Panoply. You might see out there today that there are um, solutions that charge you according to your usage um, and we just philosophically disagree with that notion because we want our users to query their data warehouse we want organizations to become data driven not be worrying about their um, if they ran too many queries um, that that past week or not and to bring that to also discuss a little bit more about the pricing on um, when it comes to the storage component it's going to be flat and predictable we don't charge you for overages um, we get there are, and I can certainly give a little bit more of a thorough answer to this um, afterwards. So if anybody would like to, to ask, let me know. Um, but to give it, to simplify it, it's going to be upon the amount of storage that you have within um, Panoply, as well as the number of data sources that you ingest into the platform. And so you're going to have the same pricing every single month, every single quarter, um, without any sort of change, because we don't charge according to usage. Okay. I'm speaking as a as a prospect here. Um, I'm I get it. I want all my data in one spot. I want it to be fast. I want it to be nimble. But I'm not very technical. I don't. I've never written SQL code. Um, I do know a little bit about Tableau or Looker. Um, so I'm I and I have lots of questions about that data can answer. But how technical do I have to be to implement a data warehouse such as Panoply? Um, Skylar, could you take a whack at that question, please? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so we certainly have um, within our client base people across the spectrum of technical know-how, uh, so to speak. So we work with very technical users and um, others that, as you say, are more familiar with a, a BI tool or maybe not even that far. Um, 
what that should say to you is we can certainly accommodate less technical users and actually a lot of our users are less technical. Um, generally, as you can hopefully see with the demo I was giving Panoply, it's pretty easy to kind of click through and authenticate and select the data that you want to ingest and there's, there's no coding involved, right? Um, and if you needed some assistance during that process, we have uh, great people who help with onboarding, um, including DAs who will work with you to set up your data sources and make sure that everything is configured in a way that will be uh, appropriate for when you're visualizing your data, dashboarding, et cetera. Um, as far as actually querying your data, so let's say a client wanted to uh, write a view, but they just have no idea how SQL works, they have no basis of knowledge around that concept. Um, again, you know, DAs can step in and, and definitely help out. So as long as we are provided with some level of business logic and um, understanding of the types of data that you're pulling in and what you're trying to get, we can definitely guide you when it comes to syntax, um, you know, best practices about writing queries in optimal ways, uh, how to do things like joins. Um, I think that's a differentiator with Panoply is we've talked about this a little bit today, but our, our support um, staff within the organization is really knowledgeable and, and really willing to help and, and jump in and, and get dirty with your data, so to speak. Um, so please do not worry <laughs> if if you're in that situation, Jason, or if you know one of our uh, clients are in that situation. It's something we can handle and uh, we can definitely support um, going forward. Great. I don't mind getting dirty with data. <laughs> um, how long does it take to typically take to get up and running with Panoply, Mac? If you are, if you have a few sources in mind that we support, and if you go through the process that Skyler showed today, um, you could be up and running from zero to a fully functioning data warehouse in just minutes. Um, and again, I would highly recommend people to take out a free trial. It's found on our website work with um, myself or someone like myself and one of our DAs, and we can walk you through the free three weeks. No credit card information is required. Bring in as much data as you would like from as many sources as you would like, and you'll be able to see, um, certainly within the three weeks, um, if not in the first day, how quick and easy it is to scale and uh, become data-driven within your organization. Yeah, that's one thing I really like about our trial as well is, and I'm gonna sound salesy here, but I'm not trying to be, is that, um, our trial is not a watered-down version of Panoply. It's the full-on, the full-on version. And in terms of getting data in, um, I am in marketing. I'm in the I'm in the marketing work here, and like sometimes I want to answer questions such as, you know, how are how are things uh, looking on Twitter? How are things looking on Instagram? How are things looking in GA or Google Analytics? And what is great about bringing data into Panoply is all you do as Scott was showing is, is you go choose the service you want to bring in, put in your credentials, your username and password, and then data starts flowing in. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. So with that, we're going to close our question and answer period and also close out our webinar. If you miss this or you want to share it with a friend or colleague, we are going to make a recorded version available. So um, keep an eye out for that. If you registered for the webinar, um, you'll get it in your email. And if not, we will be making this available on our website which is panoply.io. So I want to close by thanking our panelists, uh, Mac and Skylar. Thank you again. And again, thank you to, for listening, and we hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.